Hello. So after uh, some technical problems, we are finally done. So um, we are uh, Blendfix. My name is Sebastian. This is Simeon. Um, just briefly, just about us. We work in, in Leipzig in a small office where we do some things. We work uh, as a team also with other people that uh, have their office here in this uh, room, for example, uh, Mikawa. You might have heard from them because we, together we uh, sponsored the Autonode offset by the great person in the middle of this image, Severin, uh, Julian, thank you. Um, and um, especially since the last year, we, uh, we worked uh, together on a few more projects. So what we do in general is um, all things you can do with Blender, like uh, VFX, visualizations, uh, animations, uh, cinema and uh, TV stuff, uh, stuff. Um, and what we do as well is, uh, since, especially since the last year, is uh, interactive stuff. Um, so, no, just um, at the beginning, one year ago, Mikawa asked me, can you do some interactive stuff? And I said, okay, let's try. Unity is well known in the, um, to begin with and we make two little games, Qtris and Everest, for customers is what we was asked for, yes, special style. And um, beginning with interactive stuff, we also noticed that there is the, the Oculus, the, the Rift campaign, and we ordered a DK2 just to, yes, we have the possibilities to try it in a game engine, and then the package arrived. We put it um, out, and we are not paid by Oculus all, VR devices are great, just that's our his, um, story, how we um, get in touch with VR one year ago. And we, we put it on our heads and everybody in our office was, um, yes, we were amazed and thought, we should work our, our um, standing in the VR, um, yes, in the VR world. So. Um, talking about desktop headsets like the Oculus Rift, it has great performance because of the PC behind, and position tracking is also feels very good. But um, after the first weeks, we um, noticed also it's very clunky. There are a lot of cables. You have to stand behind the person. The consumer version one year ago it was that means also if you have. You want to give experience to 20 people, maybe in a um, lost place, maybe in a, in a building. You have 20 PCs, 20 VR devices, so it was difficult to think of a use case for us. We are not game designer, we want to give an experience. And all in all, it's also expensive because every device needs a PC. So we thought, that's not our VR solution, let's look um, away. There are also the mobile headsets, and. We bought Google Cardboard, Gear VR, Durus Dive. We have about 10 different mobile devices. And um, looking at them, they have limited performance. They have no position tracking yet, but they are mobile. They are available. Um, you can, they are not ex very expensive. And, so, and also um, making a VR app with mobile, it's easier to publish them. You can use the Play Store or iOS Store. All in all, it's a low entry barrier for us as a small studio. We said, that's our way. We should make mobile VR. And now the next question, what should we do in there? So if you, if you consider that there are these hardware limitations for, uh, for mobiles or for, for uh, smartphones, um, uh, you can do things like uh, film, of course, because everything is rendered and uh, you just need to play it back. So it's easy, right? Well. Um, the render times are horrible for film, for VR. No, really, they are like horrible because it needs to be 4K to, to have a good detailed experience. It has to be completely noise free because render noise totally kills the VR experience. And ideally, you don't have uh, 24 frames per second, but ideally 60 frames per second. So that's really like a fluent, non stuttering experience. Uh, and then you just double that because uh, it needs to be stereoscopic. Um, so, not only the production of film is a little bit complicated and has some issues, also the file sizes are gigantic. So, if you want to have it mobile, then you need to download 
gigabytes of data or you compress it so much that it doesn't look good anymore. And there is a very nice app in the, uh, in the app store called uh, Verse um, where you have small beautiful videos but that's like one gigabyte, that's the file size that you have to prefer, prepare for. And that's not really mobile and that's also not fun anymore. Um, the other thing about film is it's linear storytelling, so it just uh, goes from A to B, so uh, you cannot, well you can pause it, but that's uh, weird as well. So you have not really a freedom in time. Um, and Especially we like to just look around in a VR world without being constrained to time limits that you have in film. And apart from that, um, the render times are really horrible. Um, so film, nah, we, we don't do film yet um, because of these constraints. Um, so instead, we do um, interactive stuff. You can hold okay, up. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah, standing here, this mic is better. <laughs> yes, and what the... Sometimes the first thing you do, you think about, okay, let's make something in 3D, interactive. Oh, let's take our office. And if you remember the um, photo, that's our table tennis. And yes, it's a part of our bureau. And But we noticed it's also not easy. That's another demo. We make not the office. We make a virtual environment in game engine in real time. And we noticed it's difficult to, as non-main game developers, um, to produce such an interactive real-time environment and having also the limitation to have 60 frames per second and in mobile, 60 frames per second. And that, um, yes, we noticed it's the visual quality we want to achieve is not possible in real-time yet. That's another screenshot. It, it looks it was a nice experience to go to one by viewing to go one from one place to another and ex um, yes see this building from inside but you see limited geometry because we cannot do everything in there our solution is pretty simple it's interactive stereoscope equi rectangular virtual reality panoramas <laughs> Maybe we should explain some more details about it. Just some short experience how, how this started. At the beginning I thought, okay, putting one camera in, one equi-rectangular camera, render the image in, 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 as a panorama, put it in Unity, look at it, okay, it's nice, it's monoscopic, let's do it in 3D. I um, pressed the button stereoscopic camera, rendered it and, oh, it's looking weird because um, it's not correct. It's only... Oh. You can imagine if um, a stereo, stereo rig looks toward, there is an, the, the convergence point, but behind these cameras it's not correct anymore and left of the cameras is not correct, so you should have a rotating stereo rig and that was a next experience. I thought, okay, if there's no possible, it was one year ago, I have to mention. I rendered um, four slices, one to the um, front direction, back direction, left and right, put them together and I had, I had already a good stereoscopic feeling, but also there are the edges between these slices. So I thought, oh, let's make more slices. And we made a Python script which rotates the script and renders only a border of, let's say, four pixels. And we had a picture with these, all these slices, put them together and that's a stereoscopic, um, stereoscopic image. And then Dalai fell into came. Yeah. <laughs> and so he, uh, he at, at, right at the time where, where we were doing these experiments with Python and this horrible uh, convoluted workflow, like he just said, yeah, well, I have a custom build that does that. You press a button and you're done. And of course, that's awesome and we instantly use that. Um, with uh, spherical stereoscopic rendering. And of course you need a custom build for it. Um, so uh, Simeon started to work on his first app using that. Yes, um, one idea was to have um, musicians singing around you. It's called Slicks, it's the, also the name of the band. You can download on iOS and Play Store. And the environment you see in the backdrop is a spherical stereo image, but 
in front there are six planes around you um, playing a video plane with alpha and it's like standing in the middle of a band and they're singing around you. It was just, it was not a money project, it was just we have to make projects to get in, to, to see what the problems in VR are. Ah. <laughs> yes, and here you see the Slick Singer singing on the Gooseberry Island. <laughs> and you can switch it on runtime, the environment. And the next idea was, okay, let's make a space shooter. <laughs> Because, of course, the first thing you do when you do interactive uh, VR things is like, let's shoot asteroids, that's awesome. And um, uh, Matthias Eimann, a colleague from our studio, uh, he modeled a, a spaceship and we rendered it in uh, like stereoscopic but as a panorama. So you can sit inside the cockpit and um, we made the, the, the window of the cockpit transparent. So behind this you can still shoot uh, interactive um, asteroids. It was an experiment, it's, it's not published yet, um, but it was very fun. And because we were so uh, enthusiastic about this and this workflow, we thought, this is awesome, let's make a talk about this at the Blender conference. And um, the, that's the name of our talk, We Are Awesome in Space, because it's, we thought this is just awesome. Um, but then, uh, when we were working on that, um, the uh, one guy from our colleagues, from Mikawa, he got a call, uh, if, he, if we can deliver interactive um, 3D content. Um, so we thought, okay, maybe let's postpone the space shooting business um, and instead do uh, something more serious, like an arch architectural demo. And um, we did this uh, VR Arcvis Pavilion thing. And I had this file laying around years ago where I was bottling the Barcelona Pavilion, um, and um, we just brought this into VR. So we had this little demo VR app where you can um, look in stereoscopic, 360 degrees uh, in this environment, um, and um, yeah, and that worked really well, and due to that we got our first commercial uh, job from a client who wanted to, to have just that for visualization of architecture, um, and that's what we did then. And I, I just want to mention, to um, compare to the film workflow, this is an image, a JPEG top button image, which has this file size of, let's say, eight megabyte. And you standing in this eight megabyte and watching them for half a minute or one minute or two minutes, and you can decide where to watch. So this is an, a really big difference to this film thing having eight megabyte and having minutes of experience and so for us and, and it's also possible to in 4k or 5k you're not so limited because you have no stream you have just one image yeah because the fun thing is to just look around explore a space with your eyes without being constrained to time or file size stuff so the just quickly because we are running out of time already so the workflow in blender is um first thing uh, is you need to have the right blender so um, make sure that the version that you work with has this button, Spherical Stereo. So this is the custom build from Dalai Filinto. Unfortunately, his website is always down. Um, so we, there are links, we will provide them maybe later on our website. Um, hopefully this will make it into master soon. Like Sergey will uh, maybe work on the camera notes and then we have sure it. Sure he so, will. Well, um, for now, there is always this custom build where you can use that. Um, so just quickly, how to set up a scene for um, VR in Blender. So first thing, of course, um, yes, you have to enable views. So this would be also, if you just want to do ordinary 3D, um, this would be what you would do as well. So you can see this is already like uh, the red-green uh, visualization of the viewport, the stereoscopy panel. Um, you can enable the 3D view. And then, as always, if you work for 3D, one thing that is very important is to set the convergence plane. And that's where you kind of, you could, you could say where you focus. Like the, the, the main area where the um, viewer is supposed to, to look at, that's where you set your convergence plane. Because uh, before and after this plane, uh, the images will shift aside and your eyes have to, your brain has to do more. So set the convergence plane where the viewer is supposed to, to look. And then if you want to render a panorama, you set it to panoramic, make sure it's equirectangular. The off-axis is a good default, and for our case, make sure spherical stereo is enabled, set the pivot point to center, 
and then set the dimension to 2K. Or you can just put it to 200% for 4K, but this is the, the 2 to 1, that's the, the side aspect ratio. And if you go to the rendered viewport, then you can see this is like the panorama. Uh, it's looking very different from the OpenGL viewport, but this would be this 360-degree uh, panorama. Cycles only. Uh, in, in its cycles only, yeah. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, you render that, and um, it takes a while, so we uh, speed up the display a little bit. Uh, um, it would be nice to be able to do this in reality as well, but um, unfortunately, <laughs> this is not the case. But here, um, I'm switching between the left and right eye. You can do that in the, in the header of the uh, image viewer, of the output. And you can see how the two eyes are shifting, and they are shifting um, around one point, that's at the, the top of Suzanne's head, and that's the convergence plane. So this is where um, they, the, the two eyes converge, and before that point, uh, pixels shifting to the left, and behind that to the right, if you switch the thing. And the, the point is that only with this build from Dalai, this will also happen if you go to the other side of the image, so you would still have the same convergence plane and the same amount of shifting. So this is a little bit of the um, stereoscopic magic that's happening here. And if you render that, um, um, eventually uh, the, re the render will finish and um, you can save the file. And one format that we used in our workflow was to set it to top bottom. So just set it to JPEG and then go to Stereo 3D. Of course, you can also output the left and right eye individually, but we found it's better to set it to top bottom. So the left eye would be on the top and the right eye on the bottom. And this will then look like this. So this is one file that you can watch with some kind of viewer. The thing is, uh, if you look at it uh, like this, uh, it will be, it would look okay, but uh, you really, you zoom in a lot, so it has to be noise free. Um, so this is the uh, pavilion that we rendered, and one issue with the equirectangular spheres is that the sampling isn't really smart. So in this area, um, cycles will sample the same amount uh, like in the, in the center of the image, but of course because this will be squeezed into a sphere, uh, the areas on the top and bottom of the image will be very small, so you lose a lot of render time, so you are over, over sampling. And there is one other method that would be better, and that's cube maps, and um, this would look like this, so you have the six sides of a cube, uh, rendered like each eye again, left and right side, um, and um, the yeah, this will give you up to one uh, third of the render time less, so it's more efficient. Unfortunately, when we were doing our first job uh, in, the, in this pavilion, we didn't have that yet. But again, the lie to the rescue. Um, so um, we. Uh, he said he could do this, and we sponsored the cube map add-on that lets you render the, this cube map file format with Blender. Um, I think I'm going to skip this video because we are really running out of time. Um, just briefly, uh, it will set up six different uh, scenes. Forget it. Cube maps are awesome, but a little bit um, more in development still. If you want to try it out, you can uh, find this uh, on Dalai's GitHub page. Yes. Maybe briefly about the workflow in Unity. <coughs> no, sorry, I take this one. Yeah, yeah. Sorry for so, rushing. So um, the workflow in Unity, I will explain not the cube maps because um, both um, methods, spherical images and cube maps, have both advantages and disadvantages. It's because cube maps are 12, 12 images, the setup is a little bit um, more difficult. So I show the spherical image workflow in Unity. But before going to Unity, I produce um, the mesh which is used in Unity, which contains the texture. And this um, mesh is also created in Blender. So the base where to project the texture or the, where to use the um, texture is a sphere. And I deleted the top and bottom vertices and extrude the lower and upper rings just um, to the center, but not close, not to zero. This is um, in my, um, what I yes, used to do necessary for, um, to unwrap a sphere correct to a rectangular. You will see it in a moment. Unwrapping such a sphere with spherical projection leads to 
and correct spherical unwrapping. And scale to bounce was pressed so that it matches to the borders. And now I can close the poles. Scale it to zero. And maybe I can also a little bit speed up. After that, I have a monoscopic um, sphere. What I do now is flip the normals to inside. I flip the normals direction to inside because later what's we will be inside the sphere, so we have to see the sphere from inside and make it smooth. To see it in Blender, I have turned on back face cooling, which means you just see the side of the face where the normal is, just when the normal is directing to you. And now I copy this sphere. The one sphere is renamed to L for left, the other one for right. And for the left sphere, I put it the UV coordinates to the top of the virtual image and for the right sphere to the bottom so that it matches our top bottom image. So what, what you see is geometry for left and right eye with the right coordinates for a picture which, which is top bottom. So the next step, more important, in Unity. I imported the Google Cardboard SDK which is free available from GitHub also the um, 360 sphere which is the blend file and the gooseberry you see the gooseberry um, file this is a top bottom image the mouse look is just for presentation in here I deleted the um, scene camera and the scene light because I need we need nothing just the cardboard main prefab which the stereo rig this is our geometry we, uh, we created in Blender one minute ago. And we set the shader to unlit. Unlit texture, that means shadeless. Now you, s you saw, I just, um, oh. hmm. Where was it? I just dropped in the texture and at that moment the UV coordinates are correct for left and right image. Now I have to add also layers for left and right eye because yeah, I put the um, sphere from also on the right layers to tell the cameras now which layers to see. The left camera may not see the right layer and the right camera may not see the left layer and that's it. You can do it in let's say five minutes with research, you, it may some, some hours, uh, but now that's a functional VR demo with a Blender produced image. So, <laughs> thank you. So, um, yeah, yeah, we, we still have a little bit to, no, okay. Just quickly. So our tool set is all free and it's all available and it's, everything is super cool. So the 3D software is Blender. The game engine is Unity, which is freely available. Of course, if you want to use it commercially, you might have to spend a few uh, euros, but uh, you can test it freely. Um, the VR from the, the Google Cardboard SDK is also freely available. And you all have a VR device. So what's missing, and especially in our workflow, one thing was missing, and that is a decent viewer. I mean, of course, you render something, and then you want to view it on your cardboard, but how do you get there? You cannot just always go to Unity and build an SDK and blah, 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 blah. That's really annoying. We didn't find a decent viewer, not, at least not a cross-platform cross viewer for iOS and Android. So we'll just do it ourselves. So uh, let's build a cross-platform VR image viewer. That was the plan, and we thought, yeah, that's awesome. Um, so we want to have this viewer where you can just put your images and then immediately have them in your, uh, in your cardboard and view them. Of course we want to share it with the community, but then you go and have your uh, um, blender beer at the, uh, in the evening and then you have another beer and then you get crazy ideas. For example, wouldn't it be cool if we can all share, all share our VR renderings and have not only the viewer but also a gallery. Um, and that's what we are actually presenting now and we have to rush it a little bit because today we uploaded Vrai 
to the Play Store. So VR Awesome in Space. This is uh, an app for you. Um, where, where you can explore um, the, the VR renderings of the community. You can mark images as your favorites. And of course, you can just upload and view your own images in this gallery. Um, there is a website where you can upload. You have to register, of course. You can upload your images. Um, and if you want to, you can publish them. And they will go through a short review process because we have to make sure that no crap is being uploaded. Um, but then uh, you can just uh, share and view images of other people. And the website is vrai.io. Coincidentally, vrai also means real in French, uh, I guess. Um, if I remember correctly, so this was a little bit of a funny thing. So, <laughs> <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs>